everyone, welcome. Today's Fable performance is the culminating component of our sixth grade oral tradition unit. Drawing ideas from the stories we've read in class, we wrote our own original fables to perform for you. We then worked on a few of them and turned them into scripts. Together we created simple props, costumes, and sound that accompany our fables. We have taken on many different roles, serving as writers, actors, and even directors. The result is a production that we are excited to share with you today. We hope you enjoy watching our fables come to life. Thank you so much for coming. We hope you enjoy the show. Warning, before we begin, I'd like to warn you the events in this fable are very cringy. Try not to cringe too hard. At this moment, please silence your phones, not that you should have them, and please enjoy Rusty Rabbit Restarts His Life. Rusty Rabbit Restarts His Life by Zach Orbeck. It was a beautiful sunny morning in Fable Forest. Rusty Rabbit was enjoying his favorite hobby of playing video games in his den. When he saw Graham the Giraffe out in the field next to a beautiful fruit tree, Rusty Rabbit's stomach growled. He decided to go out to get something to eat. That fruit sure looks good. It sure is. Can you get some fruit for me since I'm not tall enough to get it myself? This fruit? No way, dude. I need it all for myself. Laughing noises. You can have all the fruit on the ground, though. That fruit is overripe, though. You always just hog the good fruit while the small people don't get anything good. You know what? That magical owl, Ollie, might be able to help me. After carefully tiptoeing through the warm encrusted fruit and the mushy remains on the ground, Rusty skips over to Ollie's house. Ollie Owl, are you in there? Yeah, I'm guessing you want me to put a magic spell on you or something? Yeah, is there any way you can turn me into a giraffe? I can, but why exactly do you want me to be a giraffe? I never get that right fruit since I'm short, so I always get the fruit that's rotten. Okay, but once I turn into giraffe, there's no turning back. Yeah, that's fine, get on with it. Okay. Here, one, two, three. Sorry, I'm a little bit rusty. I mean, ow. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna go up. Stop. Oh my gosh, I'm getting taller. Oh, I'm turning low. It's working, it's working. Oh, thanks so much, Allie. Well, I ought to get on my way. I have some fruit tea. Okay, just remember there's no turning back. One more. Rusty went over to his house and started picking fruit. He was amazed at how tasty this juicy, non-warming, non-mushy fruit was. Oh, this fruit is so good. I don't know how I lived without it. Uh, I sure am stuffed. I'll just go relax in my den. Rusty started to get in his den, but... No! Too big to get in my den! Uh, maybe if I go in this way, or this way... Uh, it's useless. I'm gonna have to talk to Ali. Rusty runs as fast as he can back to Owl's tree. Ollie, you've got to help me. I can't fit into my den. Sorry, dude, there's no turning back. You're a giraffe. And the moral is... It's hard, hard work. No, it's no that's what you have to do who you are. You are. And listen to wise owls. That's right. <laughs> Raquel the Raccoon Isn't a Rebel by Lucrezia. One beautiful spring morning, Raquel the Raccoon decided to take a walk from her tree to the forest park. Many animals were out playing, including birds, raccoons, and mice. She had not a care in the world and was looking forward to a wonderful day. What a fine morning. It's almost like we don't live in Rochester, New York. It's finally sunny. I'm so happy to spend a nice day like you. It was a very fun party yesterday. Can I go to the park with you? Sure. Excuse me, you're not allowed in the park after what your father did to my mother. No one wants you around. Leave. Did what? I'm... You should at least apologize for your father fox snapping my mother. What? I haven't seen my father since he went cliff jumping. He's crazy cliff jumping. No. I know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Your dad is a bad apple. I'm a raccoon, not an apple. It's a figure of speech. I'm a why is Raquel, Raquel Flora continued bickering about whether or not her dad was a criminal. Thankfully, Mitch interrupts the two of them. Hey, what's the big deal? She shouldn't be here whatsoever after last night's incident. Her dad is a disgrace to the society. She's nice to meet. We have a great time together. Flora Fox stopped and thought for a second, then answered. 
I'll believe it when I see it. And that means you need to save someone in order to prove you're not a menace to society like your father was. <laughs> I accept and I will show you I'm not a menace to the society. This ain't what I was thinking about, I guess could work. Meanwhile, two wolves enter. <laughs> After the ear-piercing cry of the baby bird rung throughout the forest, Raquel was barely touching the ground as she flew to the aid of the baby bird, mm. while Flora and Mitch were right on her heels. Mmm, this is a wonderful lunch right in front of our eyes. Or at least it is. Hey, you can't eat me! That's bullyism! <laughs> Let go of that innocent bird! And why should we listen to a puny coon? Raquel was so infuriated that she started punching Wolf in the stomach. <laughs> Akamara and Wolf retreated into the forest. <laughs> Raquel felt confident she had done the right thing and thought that Flora had to believe her. Flora was astounded but not yet convinced Raquel was a good egg. You have to do something extraordinary. That wasn't that extraordinary. Hey, I'm the one that almost got eaten. And off Flora walked into the silent but deadly wilderness. A couple of minutes after Flora left, Raquel heard a loud splash. Raquel ran to the side of the river and noticed what looked like a struggling fox. Sure enough, there's the fiery red-tailed Flora. Gulping in fresh air. By the second, while sprawled on the ground. Are you okay? I, I, you, you saved me. Thank you. At that moment, Mitch came running after hearing the commotion and tried to figure out what had happened. What happened? I was drowning and Raquel saved my life. What did I tell you? Yes, you were right. I'm sorry, Raquel. I should have never been And the moral is. Children should not be blamed for the faults of their parents. The Basketball Triumph by Andrew Roberts. It was a long day of math testing and science class for Ronnie Rabbit and Larry Leapfrog. It was about five minutes before the last bell. Then the announcements came on saying, everybody trying out for the bas modified basketball team needs to come to the gym immediately. That's right, just ace my math test and got with the pool level in soccer. Let's head down to the gym. Oh. All right, huddle up, boys. Everyone started whispering about who would make the team and snicker about how Ronnie didn't have a chance and they couldn't believe he was even trying out. All right, two laps around the gym for you. Everybody watch me to die for the way. Is this a side dribble? Ron, what are you doing? He's just pretending to play. Dude, what are you doing? Let's run some three pointers. Ryan, he kicks the ball like a soccer ball into the net, but surprisingly makes it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Ronnie tries to like Jumps up and tries to get Ronnie down. Oh, <laughs> All right, the team wraps will be up at 8:30 in the morning. Good practice. I think I might have a chance on the team. Sure. Next morning, Larry and Ronnie decide to go check the roster out. Yes, I made the team. What? How the heck did Ryan, Ryan the Bat make the team and I didn't? Well, Ronnie, if you weren't so cocky, but instead, probably, you might have had a chance. 
And the moral of the story is, sometimes it's better to be humble. Flight of Percy Penguin by Gwenny Nellis. It was a beautiful, chilly winter morning in the Arctic. Percy Penguin arose from her sleep. Percy brushed off her feathers and poured herself some crow. Following breakfast, she catches a glimpse of her reflection in the mirror. Ooh la la, my wings look so gorgeous. I just love my silky, shiny wings. Oh, excuse me, I have to go with a little thing. <laughs> Percy's breakfast didn't go down so well. While in the bathroom, Percy notices, wait, wait, Percy looks at a magazine. Percy notices the bird flying on the cover and the caption that reads, beautiful birds fly. I have wings, I didn't know I could fly. I have to tell everyone, they'll be so impressed. Percy decided to head into town and tell the villagers his good news. Hey guys, I'm a bird and birds can fly. Ooh. A mysterious figure was lurking in the shadows behind Percy Penguin. Oh really? You do have wings, but can you use them? Of course I can. Do you know how birds fly? Of course. You thought the wings like this. Percy looks back over at Sly Seagull with a questioning expression on her face. <coughs> Nothing too hard. Just to the islands over there, like this. <laughs> you try. Okay, let's do this. One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> you penguins can't fly. Penguins may not be able to fly, but they can swim. Ha ha, there's a pretty feathers now. Birds. No way, you're like an Olympic swimmer. Only wish I could swim like that. Really? Really. After that day, everyone lived happily ever after, except for Sly Seagull, whom no one wanted to be friends with because he had pulled such a mean stunt. He lives a life of jealousy. And the moral is... Everybody, I mean every bird, has its special qualities. Sometimes you just need a friend to recognize it. Palm Springs Pullover, written and narrated by Maya Berend. It was a hot afternoon in Palm Springs, California. As usual, on Saturdays, Katie Cat was bored, just as she sat down to watch James Charles on her phone. Hi, Bestie! Do you want to go to the mall today? I heard some new arrivals came in for summer. Of course, be there in 10K. Mom, I'm going to the mall with Isabel. Okay, sweetie, be careful and don't text while driving. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Mom. Katie runs outdoors so excited to go to the mall, she ignores her mom's words. Hi, Isabel. Hi, I'm so sorry, but my car broke down. Can you, like, pick me up, like, now? Yeah, I'll be there soon. Katie goes to pick Isabel up. Five minutes later, the two best friends were jamming in the car to the Jones Brothers gossiping. I was chill until. Oh, gee, Leah the lizard just texted me. Edie, but turn off your phone. You can get pulled over. It's not safe. Um, what? A wailing sound interrupted Katie. Um, you were texting while driving. I have a little place to give you a ticket. <laughs> Once the police left, Katie looked at Isabel. How about we go home? Good choice. The moral of the story is... Always, Always listen, listen when someone, someone is talking. It may be important. Don't text while drive. The 
Mouse Center Whiskers by Hannah Connors. It was a beautiful sunny day in the fall edge of a forest in Nashville, Tennessee. Veronica the, Veronica the mouse was getting ready for the day. Oh, what a lovely day. She then proceeded to look in the mirror. Ah! Oh no, my whiskers, they're turning gray already. This can't be happening. I need to fix this ASAP. <laughs> This is so embarrassing, no one can see me like this. So after putting a bandana over her whiskers, she went power walking towards Ricardo's house. Hello, whatever is it that you need? It sounded like a woodpecker was at my door. Hello, Ricardo. I'm so glad you're home. My whiskers, they're, they're turning great fast. This is an emergency. Um, well, may I have a look at them, please? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's bad. All right, hang on a minute. Okay, I'm gonna try to find something. Here we go. Here you go. I think this might be just the thing you need. Grab old whisker shampoo. Make the old look new. Make the gray astray. Does it work for you? Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Ricardo. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Veronica walks back to her house and washes her whiskers with the shampoo. Ah, Bless you. Thank you. I hope I'm not allergic to this stuff. So after following all the directions for the dive, Veronica skipped and whistled happily on her way to Mr. McGee's house. <laughs> oh, why hello, my dear. <coughs> what the Webster happened to your whiskers? <laughs> I checked for myself, dearie. Oh, no! <laughs> They're hopping! <laughs> Let's go and try to wash this off now. Wait, you're not gonna fit in here. Give me one second. Get sprayed, peasant! Get sprayed! Get sprayed! Get sprayed! Get sprayed! Get But no matter how hard they tried, they could not get the rabbit whisker shampoo out of their whiskers. It was permanent. <laughs> I think I can do the rest by myself. <laughs> Why did I ever try to change myself or my whiskers? That didn't help. Everyone's gonna be laughing at me. <laughs> Well, I guess that's what I get. And the moral is... <laughs> Good luck, sorry, and everything. You, you never, never know, know what, what you're, you're gonna, gonna get. get. <laughs> <laughs> The Buffalo Bills were hanging out after losing their fifth game in a row. <laughs> in the locker room, their coach tries to encourage them. Guys, where were you at practice? I only saw half of you. Well, I was playing video games and forgot about practice. I was all the way to level 20. What about you, Buffalo Bill? I was sleeping. My alarm didn't go off. You guys want to win, you guys got to work hard. Okay, coach, we really want to win. At practice the next week, they practice as hard as they can. They show up on time and put in extra effort. The final game of the season is here. Do you think we have a chance? Maybe, we did practice hard. The game begins with the Bills down 7-0 to zero with five minutes in. At halftime, the score is 14-0. to zero. Coach reminds the players. 
Guys, remember how I practice and we can win this game. The Bills head back out on the field. Buffalo Bills scores two touchdowns. And gets an interception with two minutes to go. <coughs> the score is 14-14. Buffalo Brown looks at Buffalo Bill. We got this. We were harder than them. It's the last play of the game. Buffalo Brown hands the ball off to Buffalo Bill. Runs it in for a touchdown. by Megan Rood. One sunny fall afternoon in Sunshine Hill Schools, all the animals had just finished having lunch and were at recess. Leo Lyon had just met Georgia Giraffe and knows something special about her. They sit, trying to decide what they should play. Do you want to play some basketball? Sure, sounds good. Shoot! <laughs> That's okay, even if you miss, you still get two points. Yay! Okay, what? Did you know that vegetables are like super bad for you? I mean, I didn't know that, but if you say so, I wouldn't eat them. The next day in Mr. Rabbit's classroom, Leo Lyon thinks up another lie. Do you know Mr. Rabbit doesn't like students who turn in their homework? Wow, really? Well, I guess I won't be doing that anymore. I'm surprised at you, Georgia. Georgia doesn't realize that Mr. Rabbit just wrote a zero down for missing homework. She believes they're great students now. I think I might be becoming Mr. Rabbit's favorite student. The next day, Lion comes up to Giraffe with a sly look on his face and says, There's a contest after school, and whoever paints the school with the most colors wins $1,000. Wow, really? I should definitely get there early so I can win. Do you want to come with me, Leo? Leo was not expecting this question, so he came up with a quick response. Uh, I have to help my grandma dance? Okay. Later in the school, George runs through the hallways with a green paint going flat on the wall. <laughs> I bet I'll win because no one else will win. All of a sudden... <laughs> Ew! Ew! Disgusting! I'm sorry, I was just aiming for the wall. What in the world are you doing? I need no masterpieces. <laughs> no masterpieces is trash. Who told you about this? Well, we lied, of course. Georgia then realized from the look on Mr. Rabbit's face that she's done something very wrong. Because of what you did, you get a month of detention and a week suspension. Georgia stood there shocked and realized that Lion had been lying to her the whole time. I've become a vandal because of you. <laughs> and the moral of that is not everything <laughs> someone says is always true. Thank you for coming to our fables. We hope you had a great time. We hope you learned something and have a good rest of your day.